Hey Sugarfoot, welcome back to From Head to Curve, our plus size fashion and lifestyle community. You have no idea how many times I've tried to set this up and for some reason try to make it look perfect, but here we go. We are going to do a money Q&A today. So on Instagram, I had a Q&A box up for any money questions that you guys might have had. And I am going to talk about how I, how I balance my money, how I've kind of like quickly go over how I paid off debt, but cause I've already done a more in-depth video on it. I'm going to be answering your questions pretty much today. Before we get into the questions, y'all, please give this video a thumbs up. I would love to get to a thousand likes at least. So if you're watching this on your television, press the up button, look at the little dots, hover over the dots, click it, and then you'll see the thumbs up. And if you're watching it on your phone, do landscape, and then just press the thumbs up underneath the video. Thank you guys so much for helping and supporting this channel so that we can grow, you know what I'm saying? Um, so let's go ahead and get into these questions. I love talking about money with y'all because I think if you wanna live like your best life through fashion or traveling or all the things we actually like to talk about over here, it kind of starts with your money. Like money isn't everything, but it affects everything that's important, if that makes sense. It affects how you raise your kids, affects how your family lives, affects what kind of home you stay in, affects what kind of clothes you wear. Like it's very important, even though it's not the most important thing in the world. So let's talk about a little cash, okay? So I'm at all the questions now. I guess I should go a little bit, should give a little bit of background about me. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Ashley. I'm a plus size fashion and lifestyle vlogger and blogger and content creator. I just quit my job in 2021 of September. I was an accountant for nine years and I am now a full-time content creator. So I was over the last year, drastically saving money, drastically um, paying off debt. I paid off $52,000 debt in about eight months. And I saved roughly $19,000 um, in a couple of months by working two jobs, pretty much my content creator business and accounting. And that is how I got settled enough to be able to do this full time and create for you guys full time and this is what I like to do. So if anyone is having like money, you know, issues with trying to like have the career that they want, I love to talk about this because I want you guys to actually enjoy what you do as well. I feel like we should all have the ability to do something that brings us joy as well as serve and provide a solution for someone else. So I like to do that here. And then it looks different for everyone else, right? Depending on whatever industry you're in, it doesn't all look the same, but it is all kind of, hand in hand with money and the habits that we have with our money. So I definitely wanted to go in depth in the things that I've been doing um, based off the questions you ask and anything else that can kind of help you guys navigate on money and how you can better management manage it or kind of if you want to know what someone else is doing just to get an idea to see what you could do as you're trying to try new things out, right? First question is how do you prevent impulsive spending? So when I budget, I budget every single thing. So the app that I use, I think there's a question on here for that too, but yeah, it's uh, what app do you use to budget? <laughs> so this is gonna be inclusive of this question. The app that I use is called Every Dollar and what it does, um, basically I think it's Dave Ramsey's team created the app. And what it does is you put the amount of income in that you plan to get for the particular month and you budget every single dollar that is in that income. So for example, if you were bringing in $5,000 that month, every dollar of the $5,000 have to have a bucket of where it's going to go. And that bucket could be your light bill, your car note, your mortgage, um, any fun spending, shopping, credit card debt, or student loans, or just eating out, groceries, it, whatever the bucket is, every single thing has to add up to your income so that it equals zero at the end of the day so that you know where every single dollar that you're bringing in goes in. So whenever I do my budget for the month, I actually include a shopping budget. So if there is a sale going on, um, it, that's when I'm like, oh, sale. Cause I try to <laughs> shop on sales anyway, because it allows me to get more for my money. And that kind of keeps me within the budget. If at any point I go over budget for that month, I need to pull something from another bucket. So for instance, if I had $300 to spend on shopping for the month and I go 350, 
and then I have like 150 in groceries, but I may have some groceries that I already have that I don't have to buy extra groceries. So I can take $50 from the grocery budget and put it in the shopping budget. That's just for an example, though I don't always do that. But I have done that before, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I don't, like my grocery budget is bigger than actually what I need. It's not $150, I'll tell you that. But it is bigger than what I need because I, I you know, I just like to have a little extra. Um, and then same thing, if my grocery budget is a bit bigger and then I happen to eat out a little bit more that same day, then I'll take a little bit from my grocery budget because I didn't eat in the house that much and put it in the eating out budget so that it kind of like ties together, if that makes sense. And then you have to be regularly checking your budget so that you don't run over. So you can't just be like spending in the same area and not really paying attention to what you're doing. Um, every day or every other day at the least, look at your budget and see if you are kind of staying within the means of your budget. So I'm gonna put tips on money management um, when you don't make much money. I think the biggest tip when you don't make a lot of money is to make sure that you're living below your means. What can you do temporarily that will allow you to live below your means so that you're not living paycheck to paycheck and constantly trying to run after the dollars because it seems like they're going somewhere you know it seems like every time you bring in money it's going to a bill it's going to a debt collector it's going to something like that you want to try to live way below your means so that you can eliminate a lot of the things that's taking up your cash flow and i would pay attention to looking at areas where you can drastically increase your money i think there is the ability to increase your money in every area so you don't have to just you know like oh i don't make enough money how can i work things out while i'm here no let me get to another place where i'm making a good amount of money that will allow me to kind of not only catch up but like take a breath and be able to breathe with the things that is happening in life like you're not trying to run after each check because every single dollar that you make belongs to someone else you actually have cash inside your home that you can do something with or you can grow with or you can invest with you can save for a rainy day like for instance your mortgage or rent should not equal 50 percent or be over 50 percent of what you bring in for the month so if you are i would say a good safe spot would be 30 <laughs> that's the 30 percent of whatever it is you bring you're bringing in so that's a good spot uh but if it's like 50% of what you're bringing in, you're kind of already pushing it. So that means 50% of everything that you make is going to services for in order for you to live in that home and also going to anything else that um, is going on in your life, whether it's daycare or your car note or insurance. You know, you have so many other things that we have to pay for and 50% of your income is already taken up to where you live. I would knock that down to like 30, 35% and they'll give you a little bit more breathing room and then try to figure out how to drastically increase your income because that will really help you um, breathe in life because nobody wants to be stressed about this money. So someone asked what to register as sole prop, finance, tracking, personal versus business. So what to register as sole proprietor. I don't know what that question means. What to register as sole proprietor. So I'm guessing why, what like, would I register as a sole proprietor versus something else? I would say I first started, uh, when I first started content creating, I registered as a sole proprietor just because it was easier and it made, um, it just, you know, kind of helped protect me on a, like a local level, keep things, you know, <laughs> keep things like just good. You know what I'm saying? A sole proprietor is already taxed heavily. So whenever you make a certain amount of money in your business, I would I think it's like 80,000 or anything over 80,000. Don't quote me. I was <laughs> I might have been an accountant, but I wasn't a business tax like a business or tax accountant. So that was not the thing. Um I was in oil and gas. <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's once you hit $80,000 of income, it, you will really see the drastic difference of of how much you are taxed on that money as a sole proprietor. So then you would want to get with a lawyer or a CPA tax uh, tax accountant that can help you register as an S Corp or I think there's another option, L Corp, something like that. I'm an S Corp now. I've just diverted over to an S Corp for 2022 because I was taxed so heavily in 2021. Once you hit a different uh, income level, then you want to change that so that you have more tax breaks on your income. 
and expenses. It kind of saves you there. And then I think he said something about how to handle finance tracking uh, for your personal versus your business. I will honestly do the same thing. And the amount of income you plan to come in, um, budget that dollar for dollar. And I still use the same app, the every dollar app that will help me with that. I just have it separated. Like at the top, I have all my personal expenses. And at the bottom, I have all my business expenses and income. Well, actually at the top, all of the income is there but then at the bottom all of your expenses i'll have my business expenses at the bottom as well and if you look into the app i think it'll show screenshots on the app store or whatever your app store is um and how it looks inside the app so you can kind of get an understanding of what i mean and you can do the same with your personal and your business just kind of know what's coming in and then already have a list of expenses or whatever it is that money is going to for the month equal the amount that's coming in and then also your play money and all the stuff like that like once you put your bills in you'll know how much play money you have and you can allocate to that so it's easier once you start putting in numbers it lessens the guesswork for you throughout the throughout the month each day you can always go to your app and see how much you have left in whatever category so if you have shopping and you've been shopping you look in your app and you're like oh i got 150 dollars left i can go to the mall i plan on going to the mall this weekend let me just see if there's anything that i need you know or oh i got 150 dollars left i got three more weeks of the <laughs> the month let me wait till the end of the month before i do any more shopping just to kind of keep things leveled so you can kind of take all the guesswork out of what you're going to do and that's been very helpful for me Okay, the next question is how do you determine what percentage to place aside to ensure you are covered for taxes? So I would say no less than 20%. Um, 20 to 25% is the safe spot, but then you of anything that you bring in. So anytime I'm paid on a brand collaboration or any other source of income that I receive, I take 20% of that and I sit it over in a a savings account that I have marked as taxes. And then that is paid quarterly. If you work for yourself, you are paying taxes quarterly. Do not wait to the end of the year because you can be penalized um, for how late you pay your taxes. So if you're using QuickBooks, um, I don't know why I did this, <laughs> but if you're using QuickBooks, then you have the ability to, QuickBooks will show you when those dates are, and then you can go in there and just make the, um, payment yourself electronically through QuickBooks, self-employed, if that's what you wanna use. That's what I use and that's what I've been doing is looking at the dates based on QuickBooks, paid on that day, and then, you know, there you go. If you're late, if you happen to be late, cause I have forgotten before, um, just pay it, just hear it, pay it. Because I think they calculate your penalty by the number of days you're late. So, <laughs> um, just hurry up and pay it when you do remember if you're not paying it on the exact day, but put yourself like several notifications so you don't forget. But yeah, 20 to 25% is what you should sit over. I think the more money you make, I would say push more toward 25%. But even then, sometimes you still may owe a little less so you can push that up to 30 percent depending on how much your business is making um i'm comfortable with 20 percent now and then i still save uh constantly that i don't have to pay a whole lot when i've paid um so it, it still kind of work itself out next question is how do you budget to include sale items that's worth it but not planned for again if it doesn't like fall within the budget that i have for the month then i need to wait to the next month um, if it's like so sale that I can see that I can sacrifice another bucket of my budget and then like make that purchase, then I'll do that. It's hard. It takes discipline, especially if you're trying to like reach goals, but I think it's easier to kind of stay within the bucket that you have or within the budget that you have for that item. So if it's a sale item and you already be kind of eyeing it. I would look at your budget and see if there's anything else that you can kind of give a little wiggle room with so that you can purchase that item and just change the numbers so that you can you can give yourself more leeway in your shopping budget to be able to make that purchase. That is my first piece of advice. Next question is, I'm struggling to find info on starting business credit. Any info is greatly appreciated. I actually just applied for a business uh, credit card only because 
I plan on putting my regular monthly expenses to that card so that it can build up points so that whenever I have to make business travel, I can just travel on the points. I don't plan on doing any extra. I've had a credit card for years that I just have not used. So I'm already in the discipline of not using a credit card. I wouldn't say get a credit card if you just plan on racking things up um, and you already have a lot of credit and you've seen it's been hard for you to get out of debt. I wouldn't advise getting a business credit card yet I would say kind of work on paying down your debt based on the extra income that you're getting from your business so that you can have a lot more breathing room um, and not have to worry about debt while you're doing all of that but I personally have had a credit card for years and not for the last three years I have not used it even if I've had it so I've already gotten a habit of not using a credit card to make purchases but to, in order for to help with travel I am uh, getting a business credit card to have all of my regular um, monthly expenses bi monthly business expenses charged to the card so it can build up points and then it's going to be automatically drafted from my checking account the payment automatically drafted from my checking account and my business bill credit that way I don't use it for any other thing because I already have a cash shopping budget that I'm only using based off of cash but all the other stuff like the online services and stuff that I use to kind of help the business go each month those are going to be applied to the card and I'll get travel points for that and so whenever we make trips like for instance to New York Fashion Week which we plan on going to this year um like business travel points and stuff like that can be used for the trip so that will be very helpful, especially when it's last minute trips on for a brand collaboration. If that brand is not willing to pay for the travel, but they're willing to pay for all the other stuff that's going on, then you know that's an option for us as well. So I'd, I'd like to have that option open when it comes to travel, especially since I want to travel more. So that is the choice that I'm doing with that. But um, I will talk to your bank. I'm talking to my bank about it. They gave me different options and you will have your personal um, credit checked even if you don't like especially if you don't have business credit you will have your personal credit checked so if you're not happy with your personal credit um i would work on that first kind of pay down all of your debt get your credit cards paid all the way off and stuff like that i know they said paying it all the way off hurts you i didn't see it hurt mine if anything it helped mine um it helped mine like like crazy so <laughs> yeah pay all like a lot of your debt off and then kind of focus on getting that down and that over time getting your bills on auto pay so that your credit is constantly um, being established in a positive way over the next few months and eventually you'll get into a better credit standing and then you can look into applying for a business card um, business credit card that will check your credit score and kind of help out with whatever business expenses you have going on. Another question is, do you use any special software like QuickBooks, et cetera, to help track your business finances? Yes, I've recently gotten an accountant and she is uh, using QuickBooks for all of my monthly expenses. And so she's going to go through my, bu my business on a quarterly basis because I, I, I like I like accounting I like numbers <laughs> I don't like oil and gas accounting I like numbers I know how to do my accounting but I can't do both I can't you know do accounting for my business and create and do all the other things that I have to do within my business like get myself together for videos and all that I, I, I don't I, I don't have the bandwidth so I have an accountant she's using QuickBooks and before her I was using QuickBooks self-employed there is another version of QuickBooks that we're using that allows a lot more reporting for me to kind of analyze what's going on how much money is coming on uh coming in each month basically looking at trend reports that will pretty much help me understand how to better serve you guys um so looking at those numbers and and it'll help me understand my business and how to be a better service at what time of the year um though that will be very helpful with the different kind of quickbooks i'm using i don't remember the exact name but i know self-employed was what i was using before and i want to say it was like 23 bucks like 23 or 26 bucks it's not a lot that would that that's a month so they also have a yearly version and you can get a savings um on the price if you do the yearly version of course but if you want quickbooks self-employed you have the option of getting that for like 20 something dollars a month and i was already using into it um turbo tax for all of my taxes since college so 
it's pretty much the same. It kind of walks you through a lot and it helps you understand how much you brought in. It helps you categorize expenses so you don't have to um, do it like so much stringent accounting. Stringent? Stringent. No, that's not it. Strenuous. <laughs> So much strenuous accounting every single month it'll help you categorize your expenses so that whenever they do come in through your card it automatically categorizes it for you each month so those are just a couple of um, benefits of using quickbooks i like it it's very user friendly i don't feel like you have to have an accounting background to use it i don't feel like you have to be proficient in excel so i think that's a good option for you guys as well but uh and it's very affordable so i the rate that I got was 20 something. I don't know if that's the rate I got because of TurboTax. Actually, no, TurboTax, using TurboTax allowed me to have QuickBooks self-employed for free for a whole year. Then I started paying the 20 something dollars a month. So yeah, that is what I use and that's what my accountant use and she's a CPA, I am not. <laughs> it's pretty much a license to say, hey, I'm a great accountant, I don't know. Um, but she uses it and yeah, I pretty much trust it and think that's a really good tool to use in any business, not just one thing or another, but it's going to be really good to help me understand the trends for the business so that I can be better, a better steward of this business. Another question is how much money should I put away when I get paid from YouTube? That depends on your goals. That's not something I can answer. It depends on what you plan on doing with that money. So are you trying to get out of debt? Are you trying to increase your savings? Are you trying to invest? Um, are you trying to quit your job? Like all of that depends on what your goals are. What I do is I figure out whatever my goal is. So for instance, I had a goal at one point to save six months of my payroll, what I'm going to pay me from the business. With anything that came in for the business, it, de it determined what that percentage would be that I would allocate to my payroll. So I would take 20% and put it to taxes. Um, I take like 15 to 20%, actually it was 20%. I take 20% and put it to like pending operations, which is what I use every single month to keep the business flowing. Any of those regular ex monthly expenses, that will be my pending operations. And 60% I put towards the payroll that got the highest percentage because that was my biggest goal at the time was to save six months of my payroll so that is an example whatever your goal is make your money work for you to be able to reach that goal if i did not have a specific goal i was just like you know out here making money i'd have my money in certain percentages that will allow me to still grow still be comfortable still have savings um but you know it just be doing what it's doing. I, you would rarely not have a goal when it comes to money. So whatever your biggest goal is, I would put that money um, that you're going to make from YouTube to that biggest goal and kind of live off of percentages based on that money. Um, I, if you don't need any of that money to live, which I hope you don't, then put it all to whatever it is that your biggest goal is. Um, and it'll help you get there faster, basically. Another question is, do you use any money budgeting apps? I already asked that, I'm sorry. I already answered that. Um, thanks, oh, <laughs> how do you manage paying off debt with saving? Okay, so I did this differently because I was doing the Dave Ramsey plan word for word at one point. Um, so what I did for was I paid off my debt I paid off a lot of debt, I paid off $52,000 in debt uh, in eight months. And then I decided to stop because I just couldn't take my job anymore. And then I saved six months of my um, just regular living expenses, which equip, which is equivalent to about 19, $19,000, $20,000. Then I went back to paying off debt. <laughs> so that is, that's the thing. Um, whatever savings goal I had at the time, which was to save my six months that I stopped paying off all of my debt to do that. And then now I'm pay back to pay off the rest of my debt, which is a student loans mostly. If I were to do that all over again, I would honestly do it the other way around. I get what Dave Ramsey was saying about handling how can you really save drastically and fast if you're, a lot of your money is going to other places. I definitely get that. Um, but I did run into things several times in the midst of saving that had I had a six month emergency fund, it wouldn't have been as painful as it was 
Thankfully it wasn't, but I mean, it could have been even more. And the only reason it wasn't as painful as it was because I was making a quite a bit of money and I didn't have like a whole lot of expenses. Uh, but for someone else that's living really, really close to paycheck to paycheck, it, it can hurt. So I would say, honestly, I would say save six months first of your expenses, then um, go into say paying off your debt. And then after that, you can live on a percentage when it comes to saving and investing. I believe in investing because saving just doesn't make you money. Investing makes you money. Saving keeps you safe. Investing makes you money. And so I think both is perfect. Like you can just save to have a savings because you can go and travel from that savings or you can have that for emergency fund and you can have that for if something happens to your car and you want to go buy another car cash, but you don't want to pay whatever that ridiculous price it is that they have at the lot you know you have a bit more power when you have a lot of cash so i get i definitely feel like it's important to save but i also feel like it's important to invest because that will allow your money to work for you and grow um help with retirements and help with college fund and stuff like that so your kids don't have to be in debt and help with any all other kind of things so you can build wealth generational wealth and stuff like that so i think that is important as well but if i were to do it all over again i would save six months of my expenses then pay off my debt and then start saving and investing but on a percentage most likely the higher percentage will be invested um so hopefully that helped i don't know if it's really helpful but yeah that is how i would do and when i was paying off my debt anything that i did not need to live off of it went to debt i didn't have a shopping budget i didn't have a uh, uh oh we finna go out to eat i did i'm not gonna lie i, I had like a 150 dollar budget which is low compared to what the budget is now but yeah it was it wasn't none of that when i was paying off like really really paying off debt and i was working two jobs because my real goal was to get out of that job because it was very mentally draining so that is what i did um, and I have a financial advisor that kind of helped walk me through that. So I would definitely advise finding a financial advisor um, to help you if you need something, someone to look at your actual numbers and give you more specialized advice. I wanted to have a Christian financial advisor because I give money back to my church. I tithe, I sow seeds. I don't need anyone that can see my money to tell me that that is stupid. This is just not somebody that I want to work with because we don't have the same beliefs. But go with your financial advisor make sure that you guys are aligned um equally yoked you know like marriage but <laughs> yeah and see if they can kind of look at your numbers and help give you more personalized advice for your financial situation i think that is very important um another tip i guess i will provide to any business owner is when you are filing your 1099 be sure to file your 1099 <laughs> I did not do this in 2020. I am a, an accountant. I am not a tax accountant. I was an accountant for a public company. I had nothing to do with taxes. So even I did not know that you were supposed to file them on the deadline. I thought other people were supposed to just get them on the deadline. <laughs> uh, but no, you actually have, there actually is a website called tax99.com where you can file your 1099s for the previous year and it will electronically be submitted to the irs and you can send a copy to the uh recipient of the 1099 as well so all that has to be done by january 31st <laughs> that's just a tip for those that are like me and just did not know those were all of the questions that came through i found my financial advisor through Dave we Dave Ramsey's website. Um, he has an ELP something, I don't know what it stands for anymore, but through his website, you're able to find someone that can help you with real estate, help you with um, being a financial advisor, help you with investments and all that stuff. So I may not go through his process like word for word anymore but me and my financial advisor have talked through this and i am doing exactly what is right for me and i think that is very important for each person you don't have to follow every single thing that a guru says but do what is right for you so that you can be happy and your money can be working for you and you can be uh building wealth and getting out of debt and not living in heavy debt paycheck to paycheck and allowing to live a happy life 
full of wealth. If you have any other finance questions, I will leave a link to my Instagram in the description because I have a highlight of all the finance and money tip related questions that I've gotten over the years and I'll save them in that highlight with my answer. So hopefully that is helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to get this video a thumbs up if you're watching it from your television. Click the up button, go over to the three dots, click that and then you'll see the thumbs up. If you're watching it from your phone, get it in landscape mode and then you'll see the thumbs up right underneath this video. Thank you guys so much for helping me to get to a thousand likes. I'm really trying to grow this channel. So they've been stagnant for like a really long time <laughs> it's been stagnant with the growth i think i've been in the 70s and i'm only at 71 <laughs> so it's it's and that's like eight months so it's been about a minute so thank you guys so much for helping with this channel growing and i hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any other questions that i didn't touch on in the video definitely um put them in the comments because you know i try to get to every single comment of my videos and i will definitely put my answer for you guys there and anyone else that needs it can check it out as well. So don't forget to um, also take the time to chat with each other in the comments if you want, build relationships online as well as in your community because you never know who you'll find on here. Don't want you guys just to come for the videos. You can also build a nice community around you if you don't have one already or if you're interested. So anyways, we're gonna end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.